Hey, what's up? Welcome back to this new video. This one is paper three of A Level Math for May June 2003. So, in this video, we're going to be taking our time to explain everything in detail, step by step, to maximize the understanding for you guys. Uh, with that being said, let's move on to the questions. So, now we have question number one. Uh, we have to show that this equation, which is this one, this whole thing, can be written in this form of cos x equal to k where k is a constant. So we have to change the whole thing into this. Cos x is equal to k, which is a constant. So what do we observe? We have this here and this here. Now, can we simplify this? And can we simplify this? Of course, yes. We do know the formulas for these angles. For example, I do know that y. Sine a minus b. For example, what should we have for this one? It will be sine a cos b minus cos a sine b, right? And how about this one? Cos of a minus b. That will give me cos a cos b plus sine a sine b. So now we know how to break these down. We can replace those in our equation right here. Of course, pretending this is a and b, a and b, we replace those back in the equations we have or in the formulas we have over here. So first one, we have what? Sine a minus b becomes sine of x cos of 60 minus cos of x sine of 60 minus of course, make sure to include the brackets properly. This will become cos of 30, cos of x plus sine of 30 and sine of x. Of course, they will be one, same thing over here. Now we have to simplify and uh, see what happens. So what is cos of 60? It should be half. We can double check, right? So cos of 60 should be half, right? Now what is sine of 60? It should be root 3 over 2. Now how about this one? Cos of 30 should be root 3 over 2. And sine of 30 should be half as well. So again, you can use your calculator to double check these values as well. Now simplify. This will become half sine x minus root 3 over 2 cos x. Here we have minus root 3 over 2 cos x. And here we have minus, so include the minus sign, obviously. Half sin x equal to 1. Now simplify, obviously, this and this will cancel out. And these two, so minus root 3 over 2, minus root 3 over 2. So for example, if I tell you what, minus root 3, over 2 minus root 3 over 2. Now because the base are the same, you can combine them. On top you will have minus root 3, minus root 3, 2. And this will give you what? Minus 2 root 3 over 2. Cancel out. You will just have minus root 3. So similarly, those two will give you minus root 3 cos of x and equal to 1. Now we have to make x, sorry, make cos x become subject, right, as you can see here. So let's do that. So finally, cos x will be minus 1 over over 3. This is question part 1. This is the value of k that we need to find for question 1. Now for question 2, it tells you hence, hence means using part 1 to solve for the value of x between 0 and 180. All right, cool. Now we have this, we have to know when cos is negative, so A, S, T, and C, it will be in the second quadrant and in the third quadrant. Obviously, here it is negative, we cannot find x directly, we have to find a fake angle theta to begin with. So we'll do this every single time when the value over here will be negative, we cannot find x directly. So here is what the value will be. 180 
minus theta and this will be 360 minus uh, plus sorry it is not 360 I apologize it is 180 plus theta <laughs> sorry so I confused this one no big deal but again we won't be needing this because as you can see the domain is between 0 to 180 so this will be we don't need this anyways right so theta will be cos inverse again theta is not your answer theta is the angle helping us to find the value of x now theta is cos inverse of the positive value of this one right so let's do this so 1 divided by root 3 um, cos inverse that is 54.7 right and finally to find the value of x x is equal to 180 minus answer that should be 125.3 degrees or 180 plus 54.7 that will be 234.7 as I've explained x is between the values of 0 and 180 obviously this will not be good so x will have to be 125.3 and this is your question uh, number one now let's move on to question number two so we have to find the exact value of this integral so how can you find this one by one let's observe so the value here is x multiplied by exponential 2x this one is an algebraic function and this one is an exponential function right so obviously uh, this will be an integration by parts right so we have to follow the rule of i late i late right why because we want to know like, for example i do know that the formula for integration by part will be uv minus integration of v by du now to begin i need to find which one will be my value of u and which one will be my value of dv that's the main question i have to ask myself right now i do know that i have to follow this rule for the u it will have to be the first element that appears in this list for example here i have algebra which is a it appears here here I have exponential it will appear right here now which one appears first you would say well obviously a appears first this one appears first so i will use algebra as my u which is algebra is x right here now obviously the other one will be the, the remaining value which is exponential exponential power 2x now from here i can find d du so differentiate you will have one times dx right now again just to just to make sure when i have u equal to x differentiate with respect to 2x so du by dx that will be one so a, du will be the value of dx if that makes sense we just cross multiply right now for this one i have v now to find i have dv to find v i have to integrate this one that will be exponential 2x divided by 2. so once i have this value so u dv v and u du sorry i can replace back in the main formula for integration by parts so what is u u is x v is exponential 2x over 2 minus integration of v v is equal to same thing times du du is times 1 times dx now simplify obviously we can uh, this will become half right this one half x exponential 2x and then here we have we can take out the value of half as well now integration of this one you will have the same thing but divide by by 2 and the limits of integration as we have seen is 1 0 according to your question again the main thing here is really just to identify it will be a integration by part so once we know this we can write down the formula next thing i have to worry is which one is going to be my u and which one is going to be my my dv now i can identify this is an algebraic function this is exponential i have to use my rule of i late 
to know which one will come first. So according to my list, I can see, well, I have algebra here, it will be this one. I have exponential in the back. This comes first, the first one will always be your u. Well, I will call this u will be my x. Differentiate, you will have du equal to 1 dx. Great. Now I have to find the values of v as well. So we have all these values, and then replace back in your main equation. Now we just have to simplify one by one. So first, plug in one, you will have half times one exponential, the value of, of two. So one over two times this will be one over four exponential. That will be the value of two. Minus, that will be zero minus one over four exponential zero. Uh, simplify, you will have what? That will be exponential over two minus 1 over 4 exponential over 2. Okay, cool. And then here I have minus, minus become plus. Here become, this one will become 1. Anything, power of 0 is 1, so you have plus 1 over 4. Now, if you observe, here we have half exponential this minus 1 over 4. So half minus 1 over 4 is just 1 over 4. So it will become 1 over 4 exponential power 2 plus 1 over over 4. We can factorize, obviously. You will have exponential this plus 1 over over 4. And this is the, uh, this will go away, sorry. Plus 1. Exponential plus 1 because we have to factorize. We don't have to. We can always factorize if you want to. This is the exact value of uh, this integral. And that will be your question number 2. Now let's move on to question number 3. We have to solve this inequality, right? which is modulus of x minus 2 less than 3 minus 2x. Now, since we have x on both sides, we have to square on square both sides. That will be x minus 2 square equals less than 3 minus 2x square. That will be x square minus 4x plus 4. Now, you must know how to expand this, right? And that will be 9 minus 2 times this times this minus 12x plus 4x squared. Well, if you guys don't know how to expand, I can show you guys. So let's say we have a plus b squared. It is simply a squared, right, plus 2 times a b, so 2 times these two, and plus b squared. So this is how you expand something like this. So we just compare and expand accordingly. Now send everything to one side. I will send everything to this side. You will have x squared minus 4x squared will have become minus 3x squared. And then what do we have? We have minus 4x plus 12 will be plus 8x. Plus 4 minus 9 will be minus 5 less than 0. From here I can find the critical values. How? We just take the same equation. But first, well, you can see we have negative here. We can try to change that. I don't have to work with this. Let me send everything to the other side. So I will change my equation to 3x squared minus 8x plus 5 more than the 0. Obviously, when you change sign, you have to change the direction as well of this one. Now, critical values, we take the same equation. To find the critical values is the values on the extremes. We take the same equation, equate to 0. So factorize. 3x squared is 3x times x. 5 is uh, 1 times 5. The goal is to get minus 8, so that will be 3x times minus 1, and then minus 5. Remember, we always take the first one, multiply by the last one, and this multiply by this. The goal is to add these two products to get this one. So 3x times minus 1 is minus 3, and then plus minus 5x, so minus 3 minus 5 will be minus 8. Good to go. Now confirming this will be minus times minus is plus, so here we have plus which means this is a good factorization. Now what x? x will be equal to the value of 5 over 3, and x will be the value of 1. This is my critical values. Now I can use my number line right now. This is my line of 0. So obviously 5 divided by 3 is more than 1. It should be right here. This is 1. Now, because my graph here is positive, it will have a minimum shape. You agree? Right? So if it is positive, it will have a minimum shape. 
Now the goal here has to be more than zero. This is my zero line. It has to be above, right? So it can be on this side or on this side. So x can be will be less than one. X will be more than five over three. So for now we have these two. So we have to check if that is true or not according to our equation, the main equation. So give me a value which is less than one. Well, value less than one. Let me take x equal to zero. Replace. So modulus of 0 minus 2 less than 3 minus 2 times 0. So this will be minus 2, modulus will be just 2. Is it less than 3? 2 is less than 3, yes. Confirming, this is fine. So I confirm that this is a good value or inequality here for my question. Now let's confirm if this one is good or not. This is 1.6, x more than 1.6. Let's take the value of x equal to 2. Replace back in my equation. We will have 2 minus 2 less than 3 minus 2 times 2. So that will be modulus of 0 less than 3 minus 4. 0 less than minus 1. Is 0 less than minus 1? You will like, oh, but of course not, right? Because 0 is more than minus 1. So in this case, it is not good. So we will reject this one. So we will only have x less than 1 as your answer. This is your question number 3. I hope the first half of the video was somewhat helpful. If you guys would love to access the full video, feel free to click on the Patreon link on the main page. Otherwise, you can go to the description below and click on this link to access the Patreon page for the full video. With that being said, good luck and thank you for watching.